Thanks for having me here. Uh, today, we are going to discuss uh, simplifying upsets and deletes on Delta Lake. So that's our topic for today. So uh, a brief uh, agenda is, uh, first, initially, we'll talk about the topic. And then we'll discuss a bit about challenges with uh, data lakes. Uh, and also, we'll discuss about, next comes the features of Delta Lake and how it helps tackle, solve the challenges with uh, the data lakes, usually. And uh, finally, we, we get into the meat of the topic, like update, delete, and upset on a data lake table, and how, how easy it is and how simplified it is to run e any of these commands and ensure your data lake is fine, ensure your data lake is pristine, and could be used for downstream uh, analytics and also machine learning. Uh, I'm also touching a bit about optimize and vacuum. Uh, these are essential for ensuring you can delete some data and also ensure we can bin pack the files and so on and so forth. And I round it up by a couple of demos. Uh, these are, I'm showcasing uh, update, delete, upset uh, in two different notebooks. And finally, uh, optimize and vacuum also is also part of uh, a notebook. So that's about uh, our agenda for today. And finally, I leave a number of references so that you can, you can uh, go through them in detail. I mean, this is kind of a lightning talk, I would say, a 30 minute session. Uh, there are enough ample number of videos and uh, blog posts which are there in my references section which would help you to uh, dig deep into any of the information which you might be interested in. Uh, with that, I'm getting into the topic. So uh, very brief about me, I'm Prashant Babu. I've been with Databricks for almost like three years now. Uh, I'm uh, EMEA practice lead for RSA. RSA stands for Recent Solutions Architect. And uh, my LinkedIn profile is uh, I showcased on on the on the slide here. Uh, I would be I would love to interest. Uh, I would love to connect with you with uh, any of you and all of you. Um, a very 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 brief about Databricks. If you are not aware, Databricks is a uh, platform to unify data, machine learning, and AI workloads. Basically, you can do everything in a single platform, which is where I'm going to showcase uh, my demos as well. And uh, Databricks, you might be aware already, are the original creators of Spark, uh, Delta Lake, MLflow, and Qualys. And we almost have 5,000 plus customers across the globe using uh, Databricks. Um, it, again, one simple slide to explain what Databricks is and what Lakehouse platform is. You might have data in uh, AWS, Azure, or GCP, the three main cloud vendors in structured format, unstructured format, or semi-structured format, or streaming. I mean, these are the kind of workloads which could be processed with Databricks for data science and engineering, or BI and SQL analytics, machine learning, and finally, real-time data uh, applications also. So this, all this is underpinned mostly with Delta Lake, uh, which is what we are going to talk about a bit more, bit in detail uh, in today's session. Um, these are the, uh, I mean, this is a very, very simple sample of uh, our customers. And you can see a couple of uh, uh, German heavy uh, customers also are present, like uh, Daimler, for example, or Zalando, et cetera, so on and so forth. So these are, that is a very brief about uh, Databricks. And finally, getting onto the topic, uh, what are the typical challenges with data lakes and how Databricks Delta solves these challenges is what we are going to discuss in the next few slides. So. Um, as you can see, most of the, uh, I mean, as per many surveys, uh, in, in fact, MIT Sloan uh, Management Review says 83% of COEs say AI is a strategic priority. And at the same time, Gartner says $3.9 trillion business value could be created by AI by end of next year, 2022. The future is here, but but there are there are a bit of problems here, like it is very hard to get right, and it is just not evenly distributed. So the same Gartner, which predicts $3.9 uh, trillion business value, also says 85% of the big data projects fail. And VentureBeat also says 87% of data science projects never make it into production. And, and some companies like Uber, Google, Amazon, et cetera, are, making, are having huge, huge success, but a lot of them struggle. And most of the reasons would be around the data, or the data which is hit, sitting in the data lake and which is causing some challenges. And we are going to drill down, drill down and discuss in deep uh, dive on a couple of challenges with uh, data lakes. The first one is something very, very simple, like uh, appending new data using Spark into a data lake. 
but at the same time some other uh, processor or some other pipeline is also trying to read the same data so that's usually essentially causes a ton of issues and user users usually want all their data all their changes to appear all at once this is very very hard to achieve making multiple files all appear at once or even a single file to appear in full form and it's not supposed to be was not supposed to be work or supported out of the box with uh, data lakes that is uh, the first and foremost problem with uh, uh, data lakes the second problem is of, of about modifying existing data is very very difficult i mean take the classic case of gdpr where uh, some someone sends a request for deleting their data i mean from any of the organizations and that implies you have to read all the data and then filter that particular row or those particular rows from the data and then rewrite the data into the data lake so that is again a huge a big big problem i mean gdpr and ccpa for that matter so there are many many manual techniques which are applied and which are very very unreliable one of which we are going to discuss here today uh, in the demos and the third and, and third option the third challenge with uh, data lakes is jobs filling midway i mean most of the big data pipelines and spark pipelines you would easily understand half of the data appears in the data lake and rest might be missing so it is usually a problem with jobs filling midway which co- which cause this particular challenge um another another problem is mixing of batch and uh, real time that is usually turns out to be actually hill usually and it is very very tough to uh, mix them and it leads to a lot of inconsistency and 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 uh, one of the variations of the first problem is with appends but at the same time streaming also adds a bit more inconsistency and basically you are reading partial results if i can say so um fifth topic uh, fifth challenge being it is very very costly to keep historical versions of the data i mean usually all the regulated organizations need some or many of the versions of the data to be available in the data lake that is bound to be costly as well as uh, leads to a lot of governance issues as well i mean auditing and governance issues as well and it is very hard to do uh, sixth challenge is about uh, difficulty to handle large metadata i mean if you have used uh, hadoop hdfs for that matter where you would have a huge amount of data in your uh, hdfs that internally causes i mean that's because a uh, huge amount of data implies large metadata to be stored at name node for example and all such problems uh, would would magnify the moment you use petabyte of data in the data lake and it's very very tough and even the metadata itself lands into gigabytes and gigabytes of data um this is one of the most classical problems i would say like too many small files uh, too many files i mean because of you are using streaming for example that implies too much of data is landing in and you are processing the data at a, at a very very breakneck speed like every 10 minutes every 5 minutes for example or even every minute and you are saving that data into the data lake that implies you are storing two tiny small files too many small files are some are sometimes gigantic files also i mean either of them are usually a big big challenge and most of the time is spent by spark just opening and reading the files rather than op- opening and closing files rather than reading the file usually on the same note it is very very tough to get uh, great performance and it is it has to be manually done and it is error prone to get right partitioning and ensuring manual techniques applied uh, to get a very decent performance not not so great performance i would say it's more of de- getting a decent performance here and finally data quality issues like usually uh, i mean it's so well that data evolves and that implies as the schema evolves the underlying storage would either have to read that data or store the data and that implies the downstream pipelines would have problem in reading that particular data which has different metadata different columns compared to the earlier data so all these are usual challenges which you will face uh, with any of the existing data lakes which are stored in any of the formats like perk for example so this is where uh, delta comes into the picture and we am going to explain why delta lake solves these particular problems whatever we discussed the nine challenges and how it solves also is what we are going to discuss now so 
first and foremost, it is built on open format and it is open source. You can find all the code uh, of Delta at delta.io. Uh, it is basically an opinionated uh, approach to for building a robust data lakes. And what I mean by that is like, it has its own transaction log mechanism. I mean, if we, I will briefly show in the next slide itself where how would the transaction log uh, looks like. So it brings both uh, the best of uh, data warehousing and data lakes all together into one single format. And it helps for uh, ensuring the downstream reading is perfectly fine even when you're writing some data to the same table, same table or same location. Databricks Delta adds reliability, quality, and performance to data lakes. How it, how it does is what we are going to discuss in the next few slides. Um, Delta Lake is comprised of only three, three important uh, topics. One is uh, Delta tables, which is where the data st is stored, and the Delta optimization engine, which is where the it allows to do mergers, upsets, deletes, it allows to do vacuuming and, and optimizing, so on and so forth. And finally, Delta Lake storage layer. So these are the three uh, components of Delta Lake. Now, to add on top of what I briefly mentioned before, uh, Delta Lake offers all these important features like asset transactions on Spark. I mean, you can, can ensure that whatever you're writing to Delta table, that will not be read by another pipeline, which is reading at the same time. I mean, that's how, that is all transaction isolation is maintained on Delta Lake. It allows for uh, unifying streaming and batch with the, with the same table. You could write to the same table and uh, a batch can also write to the same location and also streaming also can write to the same location and it allows uh, both uh, both, the, both the patterns to be, uh, to be done at the same time. So basically Lambda architecture being resolved just by using uh, Delta format. And it also talks about uh, schema enforcement and where required, you can also enable schema evolution, which is what we have a simple demo uh, showcasing that particular feature today. Uh, it also allows you to do time travel, like you can go back in time and look at the data and how it, who processed it, who added it, and on which cluster, on which date, so on and so forth, could also be seen uh, on uh, using time travel. Uh, upsets and deletes are one of the major, major important factor, important uh, options of uh, uh, Delta. Uh, structure streaming support also is available. So, just going back to the, all the nine challenge, challenges, uh, how Delta Lake tackles those challenges is what we'll discuss in the next few slides, basically. So, there are asset transactions, and all these, the first five ch channel uh, challenges are are resolved by Delta Lake by using asset transactions. Each and every table, whenever you write data, it sits uh, in the cloud object storage or HDFS for that matter. And th there is a small uh, metadata folder which gets created, like as you can see here in the uh, in the location, slash path, slash table, slash, ta slash uh, underscore Delta underscore log. That's the folder location. I mean, wherever you write a table, uh, say say customer table for example, and in, within that customer table there will be a subfolder created uh, by name underscore delta underscore log, and within that you would have for each transaction there will be a separate file created, a JSON file created. So which is what the is the is the heart and soul of uh, delta basically. So whenever you write any entry, any any row or delete or merge or do anything on a particular table all that is recorded as transactions in uh, in that particular table. So going ahead, uh, yeah. And finally, whenever uh, the number of transactions increase, what uh, Databricks Delta does is it checkpoints them as a bucket file. So that is also done Im implicitly by Databricks. You wouldn't need to do that. You wouldn't need to worry or bother about that. So this is how it does all this. Like it is hard to append data and all these problems are resolved just by using uh, Delta. And as we discussed a bit about time travel, yeah, it allows time travel and all the transactions are recorded because of the transaction log. And it will allow you to uh, go back and play, basically play play forward. Um, difficult to append, uh, difficult to handle large metadata, all large metadata, as I mentioned, it, metadata is stored in open bucket format and, uh, and it is resolved by just by reading the file. And also portions of it can be cached and optimized for fast, fast access. 
Um, this is a huge, huge problem usually. Uh, too many small files or poor files. This is where uh, things get, get very, very, very interesting. Like with Delta, you can just write a simple command, optimize so and so table. That implies it will bin back all the entire file in entire data in that particular folder where possible to one GB each, one file each. I mean, and it works within the partitions also. So this way we are going to uh, we are going to resolve the problem of too many small files as well. Uh, finally, data quality issues like schema validation and uh, evolution. Um, Delta supports a schema validation as well as evolution, even in merge and merge scenarios, uh, merge as in absurd scenarios as well. So this is what we are going to discuss today. I mean, that exactly the same topic we are going to talk today: updates, deletes, and absurds on a Delta Lake table. So um, the out of the nine challenges we discussed, uh, I'm going to touch upon uh, hard to append data, modification of existing data being uh, difficult, and finally, too many small files, uh, uh, too many file, small file problem, as well as poor performance. So what are the sample use cases for updates, deletes, and uh, upsets? So first and foremost would be uh, whenever you want to do a delete or a merge, there might be a problem, there might be a case where Someone sent a request for uh, right to be forgotten. So GDPR compliance should be the might be the one of the simplest use cases you would you would you could imagine. And uh, duplication, deduplication, you would like to dedupe your entire data lake. Even that is simply easily possible with uh, Delta. Uh, and uh, finally, what are the challenges with uh, uh, with this? Without Delta Lake, is it is inefficient probably possibly incorrect and it is very very hard to maintain and unreliable any of these upsets mostly more so with mergers it is very inefficient and it is very very manual to do it so which is what we'll come to the first topic which is up update update on a delta table now if you see the syntax it almost looks like exactly what you would do in a rdbms uh, query rdbms any of the rdbms uh, RDBMS you might have used. So the key features are updates any column for the rows that match a predicate, which is what it's a pretty simple uh, statement to do it. And uh, similarly for delete, exactly the same, like what you would do in a RDBMS, delete from so-and-so uh, uh, table where some column predicate is what you would provide. I mean, in both the cases, updates the column values for the rows that match a predicate, but if you don't provide any predicate, it updates all values for all rows, whatever uh, you are your, your mentioned here, like update languages, set name is equal to Python 3, if it's specified without a predicate, it will just blindly update everything. So that's the same thing even for delete. If there is no predicate given, then it deletes all the rows. And which is finally we come to the important topic of upsets. So merge without data lake would be very, very painful to just to walk through the simplest possible approach, which is approach two. Uh, with uh, with merge, analyzing the updates on a table and find out the partitions to overwrite. That will be the first step and read all the data in the relevant partitions in the target table. Then joining these two tables, overwrite all those partitions in exchanging location and then atomically publish. This is what it would look like. Uh, I mean, a merge will look like uh, without Delta Lake. And how merge is resolved with Delta Lake it is a pretty pretty simple uh, statement to do it. Like if you do merge, if you have a customer table and if you have an update table, now you would like to do update uh, some customers whose customer ID and source ID are present, and you have a new address for all those customers. You can just do this. Like it, in this case, we are both doing uh, an update set, and if it is not available, then we are inserting. So basically, upsert, update and and insert uh, update or insert is what is happening. And we can also do, uh, in fact, delete also in this. So behind the scenes, what merge does is, it basically does an inner join between update and target. And it is not doing it on the entire data. It's actually going and looking at the min and max files of, max values of the file and getting those values and trying to do uh, some intelligent analysis there. So I'm not walking through everything here, but I'll just walk through so that I can get the demo sooner. Um, optimize and vacuum are very uh, important concepts, as I said. Uh, it is bin packing, compact, uh, compaction, and also uh, it allows data skipping with these with optimized events where so and so date uh, and z order by. And similarly, vacuum. You have vacuum, 
It is pretty simple to do vacuum and so on so table. It will clean up all the old untracked, untracked files of Delta so that it can uh, limit the storage costs. I will quickly jump onto the demos. It is pretty, pretty simple demos I'm, I'm using. Uh, this is a, a simple cluster I'm using. This is Dataverse platform, by the way. And I'm using a simplest possible uh, use case here. Oh, sorry, I think I'm sharing the wrong screen. So I'm showcasing uh, update uh, columns of a Delta table and uh, delete rows of a Delta table. So Basically, what I'm trying to do here is uh, I have a small data set. Like I have, I have a small data set where I I have Spark, Databricks, and Datla. I mean, by mistake, someone wrote a code which ensure which caused the pipeline uh, to fail to to uh, write to write incorrect values. Like as you can see here, it is Datla. Now this is a oversimplified example per se, so that we can walk through uh, the use case to to explain what Databricks Delta does. So what I'm doing here is I'm just writing the data to uh, a Delta table in the Delta format and providing a path. So that implies it is writing to the uh, external table basically. Now I'm displaying the data in from the Delta table here. As you can see, it is it is it is uh, coming as Delta as you can see. Now, as we saw earlier, now what I'm trying to do here is I have an ID column, which I know there is a three, and for which there is data here. Now, this is where we are going to do some magic like update so on so table, set some column is equal to some value, where condition. I mean, you can specify either this condition or this condition, but basically both are exactly the same. And it is automatically doing everything behind the scenes. So it, it is also showing number of affected rows here. This is how Delta performs uh, in real world. So you can see the value got changed. And the same thing which I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete that particular row uh, from, from Delta. So again, it shows how, uh, how many rows it got affected. I mean, this is an oversimplified example, but you can get the gist out of what I'm trying to do here. And uh, let me display the table again. So you get uh, Spark and Databricks because we deleted uh, ID3 here. Now, behind the scenes, as I mentioned, Databricks is maintaining a transaction log, which is what would look like. And this is the visual representation of transaction log. Every operation, I mean, this is my email ID, and this is my user ID, and this is the timestamp. I'm, I'm based out of London. So it is showing uh, GMT basically here. And you can see the what kind of operation was done and what are the predicates, what are the operation parameters, et cetera, et cetera. All this information is at a single snapshot, like a, a single, single source of truth, basically. And if I want to do some time travel, for example, I can go back in time and play, play on the time, uh, data. Like you can see here, I initially uh, ingested data as data, so which is what it is showing. Now the next step is showcasing uh, Delta. So if you see in the third, when we deleted the third row, we can see Delta is not present, but if we go back in time, we can see that. And finally, the most recent version is dead. You can see the most recent version. So this is how it is so pretty simple and naive and easy to do uh, uh, with Delta update, delete, and all this uh, very, very simply. So uh, let me go to my next notebook, which is Merge Schema Evolution. Probably I'm zipping through because I just have five more minutes. Um, so this is schema enforcement during merge. And the, the use case here is I have two columns, ID and name. The latest data has three columns, ID, name, and year. So a new column has been added to the data set year, which is what we are showcasing in this particular case. But at the same time, my requirement, my business case is I want to insert all the data, merge all the new data to the existing Delta table, but also enforcing the schema. So that implies I need to discard the new column in the Delta table. So if I can quickly run through the entire notebook, what I would do here is I'm just running the entire notebook and I have a couple of tables, source and target. Same as before, I have three rows here. I mean, again, oversimplified example so that it is easy to explain. 
Now I wrote the table into uh, data into a delta table, and I'm displaying the data here. Now, the new data frame after a couple of days, assume after a couple of days, has a new column as year. Now there are two use cases here. One, uh, you want schema enforcement strictly adhered, schema validation is done, and it shouldn't add this new column into the data, uh, into the data lake. So, which is what we are seeing here. So basically, I am doing a merge into some table using a source table based on, on a condition of a predicate condition of target.id is equal to source.id. So I have ID2, which is already present in the data. In the new data frame, ID2 has a column to 2013. Now, when I run merge syntax, merge command on this table with this, with this syntax, you can see it's pretty simple. It will look at all the rows and populate uh, and update rows where it's required and where it is uh, that particular row is not present, it will insert the row. So going back and you can see uh, it is schema is enforced strictly. So there is no new column here. And if I go to the third notebook, the, my final notebook here, here is where I am doing a schema evolution. It's exactly the same uh, notebook with no changes at all, but only change I'm doing here is, there is an option. If you want schema evolution to be available even in the uh, merge, you can you just need to enable auto merge as syntax. The moment you set this config, what Delta is doing behind the scenes is, it is allowing you, like as mentioned before, it's exactly the same uh, data frame, the first data frame, as well as the second data frame. Second data frame also has a year column now. Now, with the same exact statement, what I'm doing here is, because I enabled schema evolution, you could see year is coming out to be the value what we ingested. So basically, we have replaced uh, Databricks earlier value with 2013. So that's how the updates are happening. Behind the scenes, you can, you can also uh, look at uh, look at the way it is uh, working. And uh, finally, let me go to the last last thing here, which is uh, showcasing time travel and optimization vacuum. So this is, uh, as, as I mentioned, creatable and merge, which is what we are, we are doing. At the same time, we can do uh, time travel. I mean, we can go back to zero and one. Zero this didn't have the year column here, but now the latest version has a uh, year column. And finally, there is an option called optimize, as I mentioned. Optimize, you can see the beauty of optimize in a single command. Like here I have number of files as three. The moment I run optimize command, if I do a describe detail again on the same table, the optimize, it will optimize all the files into a single file. I mean, in this case, we are using a smaller file, but that's how it is. And finally, the last thing which I wanted to showcase is vacuum. Now, before I run vacuum, there are so many files. The moment I, I mean, Databricks doesn't allow you to run vacuum as is. So you have to enable, uh, if you want to run it as zero, uh, retain zero hours, you have to enable a sp special flag. Once you enable special flag, all the untracked files will be deleted from uh, the, the cloud object storage or the local storage. So this is, this is, these are the three uh, notebooks, three use cases which I wanted to showcase. And uh, uh, if you have any questions or uh, any any anything you would like to know, I, I would be very happy to answer them. And these are, I am leaving further references so you can take a look at it. This is a very new uh, book, like uh, the three early release chapters were released just last week. Uh, you can take a look at this, uh, the new book on Delta Lake. And finally, Learning Spark also has a chapter on Delta Lake. So, there are a couple of uh, docs and talks and webinars and so on and so forth. I'm leaving all this uh, for your reference. Please do uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, and thanks for having me. Uh, thank you very much for uh, giving me uh, time today. Um, right, thanks again uh, for, for your presentation. Uh, it was really interesting to see all the things that Delta can do. It's a pretty interesting format and well, the tool you chose is pretty cool. I'm just going to check to see if there are some questions. The last minute, there were not. Uh, so maybe I kick start with just one from mine. Uh, 
what are, I mean, well, we talk about all these really nice things that Delta can do. What are some limitations that Delta has uh, at the moment or, or things that you plan to improve or add in the future? Uh, Delta is evolving as we, as we con continuously like, I mean, because mergers usually cause a lot of problem. I mean, they create multiple small files. So as time goes on, their Derbex is adding more and more features into Delta, like low shuffle merge, for example. I'm just giving one sim simple example, um, which will allow, which will not remove the ordering which is there in the local files. I mean, in the files which are read, so so that it will not rewrite the files in a different order. Rather, it will retain the exact same order which was there before because of the Z ordering. It will help for data skipping, for example. So. As time progresses, Delta is adding, I mean, Databricks is adding more and more features into Delta, like change data feed is one more new feature which is coming in, uh, which is in private preview, to be correct. Uh, 